Welcome, dear listeners, to the shadows of Plukli, where the veil between the known and the unknown is perilously thin. This is the tale of the witch's shadow in Plukli village, an unsettling journey into a realm haunted not just by ghosts, but by a curse that whispers through the generations. Nestled in the heart of Kent, England, Plukli has long been whispered about in hushed tones as the most haunted village in the country. But beyond the ghostly legends that lurk in its mist-shrouded fields and along its cobbled lanes lies a darker, more insidious tale. Here, the night air is thick with the scent of the unexplained, and the shadows hold more than just darkness, they hold secrets. In this series, we will delve into a chilling narrative of eerie phenomena, where a witch's ancient curse casts a long and ominous shadow over the lives of the villagers. Each episode will unravel part of this spectral tapestry, revealing how the past continues to haunt the present. So, dim your lights, draw closer, and prepare to be enveloped by the chilling embrace of the witch's shadow. Listen if you dare as we step into the eerie silence that blankets Pluckley Village, where every whisper of the wind and crack of a twig might just be the stirrings of something sinister, waiting in the darkness. Join us as we uncover the mystery, fear, and suspense that is the witch's shadow in Pluckley Village. Welcome back to the shadowed paths of Plukli, the heart of our tale, the witch's shadow in Plukli village. Today, in our first chapter, we step into the whispers of the past and the chilling embrace of England's most haunted village, Plukli, set deep within the lush, verdant landscapes of Kent, holds a reputation that chills the spine of even the most skeptical. Known far and wide for its spectral inhabitants, this village is a patchwork of haunted sights, each stitched with its own story of dread and mystery. From the screaming woods to the ghost of the Red Lady, each tale adds a thread to the eerie quilt of this place. Our story begins on an autumn evening, the kind where the mist clings to the ground, and the last light of day struggles against the creeping shadows. Pluckley seems almost suspended in time, a village wrapped in an ethereal fog that blurs the line between now and then. But what is it that cast such a haunting spell over Pluckley? The legends here are numerous. Face the tale of the highwayman, gruesomely pinioned to a tree at Fright Corner, his spectral figure sometimes seen reenacting his final, brutal moments. Then days the water cress woman, who met her end in a mysterious blaze, her ghostly form often sighted ablaze near the Pinnock Bridge. Among these ghostly residents, one legend stands predominant the story of the witch's shadow. It is said that centuries ago, a woman scorned by the villagers for her knowledge of the old ways was condemned as a witch. In the dark of night, they took her from her home and bound her to a tree. 
the very same ancient oak that still stands by the old churchyard. As the flames consumed her, her purse echoed through the village, a shadow of vengeance and terror, forever to linger over Pluckley. Since then, her shadow has been sighted in the ding twilight, a chilling reminder of old wrongs and unresolved fates. These tales are not merely stories. They are the woven fabric of Pluckley's identity, told and retold through generations, each retelling adding to the spectral atmosphere of the village. Even today, these legends draw the curious and the brave, some in search of ghosts, others in search of answers. As night falls over Pluckley, the line between the living and the spectral blurs, and one can't help but feel the weight of unseen eyes, the touch of an ethereal presence. It is here, in this village shrouded in mist and mystery, that our story finds its heart, beating quietly in the shadow of the witch's curse. In our next chapter, we will meet our protagonist, whose arrival in Pluckley stirs these ancient shadows, awakening whispers of the past that perhaps should have been left undisturbed. But for now, let the chill of Pluckley's legends seep into your bones as you ponder the darkness that awaits. Stay tuned, and remember, in Pluckley, the past is never truly gone. It lurks in the shadows, always ready to re-emerge. Welcome back to the Witch's Shadow in Pluckley Village, where shadows whisper and a past is never silent. Tonight, in Chapter 2, we delve into unsettling experiences and eerie encounters as our protagonist, Alex, a newcomer with a keen interest in the paranormal, steps into the heart of Pluckley's mysteries. Upon Alex's arrival in Pluckley, the village seems to pause, as if the very air itself is holding its breath. The quaint, picturesque settings of rural England belie the undercurrent of something more ancient, more sinister. As Alex drives through the winding lanes, the fog seems to curl fingers around the edges of the road each turn bringing him deeper into the village's embrace. His first encounter with the supernatural occurs on his very first night, staying in a small, aged inn that boasts its own tales of hauntings. Alex is awakened not by the sound of the alarm he had set, but by a cold whisper at the stroke of midnight. The room lit only by the moon's soft glow filtering through thin curtains, seems filled with a palpable sense of expectation. As he scans the room, the temperature drops, and his breath turns to mist in the air, a spectral phenomenon with no logical explanation. The next day, Alex sets out to explore the village and meet its inhabitants each a keeper of stories and superstitions. He first meets Mrs. Wetmore, the innkeeper, a stout believer in the paranormal powers that grip Pluckley. She warns him with a solemn tone. Respect the spirits, young man. They watch us more closely than you might think. 
Her eyes flicker with a mix of fear and fascination as she recounts sightings of the Red Lady, said to wander the churchyard and mourning for her lost child. In the local pub, Alex overhears conversations laden with superstitions that govern daily life here. The villagers speak of the screaming woods, where it is ill-advised to wander after dark, lest one hears the cries of souls lost between worlds. One local, an elderly man named Tom, shares his personal encounter with the highwayman's ghost at Fright Corner. He was as real as you or me, till he vanished into the mist. Tom recounts, his voice a mixture of pride and fear. As Alex listens, it becomes clear that these are not just stories. They are a way of life, a way to make sense of the unexplainable events that seem all too common in Plukley. The villagers' beliefs are steeped in a history of strange appearances, reinforcing their superstitions with every shadow and every unexplained sound. Later that evening, as Alex walks back to the inn, the air feels charged, as if a storm is brewing. The shadows seem to move, stretching towards him as he passes the ancient oak by the churchyard, the very tree where the witch met her fiery fate. A sudden chill makes him turn, but there is nothing there just the lingering sensation of being watched. In Plickley, Alex realizes the line between the living and the dead, the explainable and the supernatural, is as thin as the veil of mist that covers the village at dusk. Each step deeper into its heart brings more questions than answers, and every shadow hides a story. Join us next time as we continue to unravel the chilling tales that bind Alex to this haunted village. For in Plukley, every corner turned and every door opened might just lead to another ghostly tale. Stay tuned, and remember, in Plukley, even the silence speaks. Welcome back to the chilling folds of the Witch's Shadow in Plukley Village. In tonight's chapter, we delve deep into the dark heart of the village's most enduring and haunting legend. As Alex seeks to unravel the mysteries that cloud the air of Plukley, he finds himself drawn to the origin and sightings of the most feared specter, the witch's shadow. Her story unfolds for there as Alex, driven by an insatiable curiosity and the unsettling experiences of his first few days, decides to explore the legend of the witch that has haunted Pluckley for centuries. It begins with a visit to the village library, a small, musty room ticked away behind the market square, where the history of Plukley breathes through the ages in its dusty tomes and well-owed papers. Here, Alex pours over old manuscripts and faded newspaper clippings, his eyes tracing the lines of text that speak of a time when superstition ruled the minds of Plukley's inhabitants. The tale of the witch, a woman named Madeleine, emerges from the shadows of history, accused of witchcraft in the late 1600s. 
She was a healer and a midwife, whose herbal remedies and sudden insights led to suspicion and fear among your neighbors. As Alex reads, the story unfolds of how one harsh winter, a series of misfortunes befell the village props failed, livestock perished, and a mysterious illness took the young and old alike. Whispered accusations turned into shouts of blame, and Model in was marked as a witch, dragged from her home by a fearful mob. She was bound to the ancient oak in the churchyard, and burned alive. With her last breath, Model Inn is said to have cursed Pluckley, proclaiming that her shadow would forever linger over the village, bringing misfortune and despair. The historical records show sightings of the witch's shadow begin almost immediately after her death. Descriptions of a dark, shapeless form, sometimes with glowing red eyes, filled the pages of local folklore. Villagers reported eerie encounters, especially on the anniversary of her death, when the shadow was said to be most powerful. Seeking more personal accounts, Alex next visits the village's oldest resident, Mrs. Eleanor Bramley who lives in a creaky old pottage that watches over the screaming woods. Mrs. Bramley, a woman whose roots are as deep as the oak itself, shares her own experience. One foggy evening, she recounts, she saw the shadow near the old oak. It was like a wisp of smoke at first, then it grew denser, forming the outline of a woman. Her features blurred, but her presence unmistakable. The air grew cold, and a whisper seemed to drift through the leaves, speaking words she couldn't quite catch. Her story sends a shiver down Alex's spine. The elder's eyes, clouded with years, look into the distance as he speaks of the curse that many believe has never left. It's not just a shadow, she whispers. It's a feeling, a heaviness that sits on your heart when you walk by the churchyard at night. As Alex leaves Mrs. Bramley's cottage, the sun begins to set, casting long shadows across the village. He feels a chill, not from the evening air, but from the realization that some tales especially those as dark and woven into the fabric of a place as this one, are more than just stories. They are warnings. Join us next time, as Alex's journey takes him closer to the supernatural forces at play in Plukli. What will he uncover as he digs deeper into the curse? Stay tuned, and remember, in Plukli, the past is always present, watching, waiting, who is spring from the shadows. Welcome back to the Witch's Shadow in Pluckley Village, where each whispered legend weaves deeper into the fabric of the unknown. In tonight's chapter, our protagonist Alex comes face to face with the dark heart of Pluckley's curse. The shadows lengthen, the whispers grow louder and the line between reality and the supernatural blurs into the unseen. As night descends upon Plukli, 
a village cloaked in mist and mystery. Alex decides to venture near the ancient oak in the churchyard, the very site of Maudel Inn's tragic end, and the epicenter of sightings of the witch's shadow. Armed with nothing but a flashlight and a growing sense of dread, he treads the path that many in the village avoid as the sun sets. The air grows colder as he approaches the tree, its gnarled branches casting eerie, twisting shadows on the ground. The moon, nearly full, casts a silvery glow, illuminating the grave stones scattered around the churchyard. Alex's heart pounds in his chest, each beat echoing unnervingly in the stillness of the night. Suddenly, the flashlight flickers and goes out, plunging him into darkness. A dense fog rolls in, enveloping him, and a temperature drops sharply. He fumbles for his flashlight, shaking it in a vain attempt to bring back the light, but it remains dark. Then, amidst the silence, he hears it a soft whisper, like the rustling of dry leaves. It's indistinct at first, then grows clearer, a murmur that seems to say, Look. Hesitantly, Alex looks up and sees it, a dark, amorphous shadow near the base of the oak tree. It's not merely the absence of light, but something denser, darker, a blackness that seems to suck in the light around it. The shape shifts, and for a moment, it looks like a woman, her outline blurred but unmistakable, with what could be glowing red eyes staring back at him. Frozen with fear, Alex feels an overwhelming sadness wash over him. A despair so deep it feels as though it's pressing down on his chest. The air is thick, heavy with thence open sorrow and centuries-old bitterness. The shadow seems to pulse with a life of its own. And as he watches, transfixed, a sudden gust of wind sweeps through the churchyard. The tree's whispering secrets do dark to tell. The encounter leaves Alex reeling, his mind racing to make sense of what he saw. Was it a trick of the light, a figment of his imagination, fueled by the tales he'd been told? Or had he truly seen the witch's shadow, the curse that the villagers feared? In the days that follow, strange occurrences begin to surround Alex. Objects in his room move inexplicably. He wakes from troubled dreams to find marks on his arms that weren't there when he went to sleep. Whispers fill his ears at night. Whispers that no amount of rational explanation can dispel. Each night, the air grows colder, and the sense of being watched of being not quite alone, grows stronger. Alex's journey into the heart of Pluckley's darkness has only just begun, and already the shadows seem to cling to him, a sign that Model Inn's curse is far from a mere story. It is a living, breathing presence in Pluckley, and now it knows his name. Join us next time as Alex seeks answers to break the hold of the haunting he has witnessed. What secrets will he uncover? Will he find a way to lift the curse? Or will the shadows claim him as their own? Stay tuned, for in Pluckley, even the brave are not safe from the past Senbrays.
Welcome back to the airy embrace of the Witch's Shadow in Pluckley Village. As the shadows grow darker and the whispers louder, our protagonist, Alex, driven by a desperate need to understand the haunting that now shadows his every step, seeks an ally in his unsettling journey. Tonight, in Chapter 5, Truths buried in the depths of history begin to surface, whispering of old purses and darker times. After his harrowing encounter with the shadow, Alex is more determined than ever to find answers. He is introduced to Jonathan Harker, a local historian and author who has spent decades unraveling Pluckley's haunted past. Jonathan's cottage is a trove of books, manuscripts, and artifacts. The walls lined with shelves that groan under the weight of history. Jonathan listens intently as Alex recounts his experiences, his face a mask of both concern and fascination. You're not the first to have seen her. Nor, I fear, will you be the last, he says gravely. Eager to dive deeper, they begin their research into the witch, Madeleine, in, and the origins of her purse. Together, they pore over ancient parish records and faded letters stored in the local archive. They uncover a diary entry from a contemporary of Madeleine, which Jonathan had stumbled upon years before, but had not fully understood until now. The entry describes Model in not as a fearsome witch, but as a kind-hearted soul, misunderstood and ahead of her time, known for her healing herbs and wise counsel. Further digging reveals a letter written by the village rector from the late 1600s, around the time of Model in's death. It speaks of a village divided of envy and fear cloaked in a guise of piety and justice. She was a threat not to our souls, but to the status quo, the rector wrote, hinting that Modelin's execution might have been motivated more by personal vendettas and greed over her and than any genuine belief in her witchcraft. Jonathan and Alex also find references to the curse in various forms, scribbled in the margins of old books and whispered down through generations in folklore. Each version of the curse adds a layer to its mystery, describing not just a shadow of malice, but also of profound sorrow, a longing for justice and acknowledgement of truth. The historian then shares tales of past encounters with the witch's shadow that he collected from older villagers. One particularly chilling account from the early 1900s described a night when the entire village was enveloped in a fog so thick it blotted out the moon. That night, the shadow was seen drifting from the old oak to the tour steps of those who had condemned her leaving behind a trail of frost in her wake, even in the height of summer. With each document and tale, the history of the witch becomes clearer, and so too does the nature of her purse. It was not merely a curse of vengeance, but a cry for her truth to be acknowledged. Jonathan posits that the hauntings will continue until the real story of Model Inn is known and accepted by all in Pluckley. Armed with this new understanding, Alex feels a weight of responsibility. It is not just about escaping the curse, but about righting a centuries-old wrong. As the clock chimes late into the night, he realizes that his journey is about to take a more serious and solemn turn. He must bring peace to Madeleine, and perhaps, 
in doing so. Bring peace to Plukli. Stay tuned for our next chapter, where Al explains his next steps. Haunted by both the shadows of the past and the taunting path he must now tread. For in the heart of Plukli, the past never truly dies. It lingers, waiting for the brave to uncover its deepest secrets. Welcome back to the chilling narrative of the Witch's Shadow in Pluckley Village. As Alex delves deeper into the heart of the village's dark past, the spectral presence that looms over Pluckley refuses to remain a mere observer. Tonight, in Chapter 6, the shadow stretches further, touching more lives as Alex and Jonathan attempt to unravel its mysteries and communicate with the unseen. The unrest in the village grows as more residents report unsettling experiences. Tales of sudden cold spots, fleeting shadows, and whispered voices fill the air, string the communal fear that something long suppressed is awakening. Even skeptics find themselves glancing over their shoulders, their laughter a bit too forced, their nights a bit too restless. One evening, at the local pub, a gathering place that buzzes with the day's gossip and ale, a hushed conversation catches Alex's ear. A group of villagers recount how the shadow appeared at the edge of the screaming woods, just beyond the glow of their lanterns. It was like the darkness itself was watching us, one of them says, a tremor in his voice. Fueled by these accounts, Alex and Jonathan set out to document these phenomena, armed with cameras, audio recorders, and an array of sensors. They spend nights near the old oak tree and the surrounding areas where sightings were most frequent, hoping to capture any anomaly that might provide clues. One particularly foggy night, as they monitor their equipment, the temperature gauge suddenly drops, and a dense, unnatural silence envelops them. The digital recorder, left near the base of the oak tree, picks up an unexpected sound, a soft, sorrowful sigh, barely perceptible, followed by what sounds like a murmur of words. Straining to listen, Alex feels a shiver down his spine, as he makes out a phrase repeated several times. Remember me. Driven by this eerie plea, Alex decides it's time to attempt communication. He speaks directly to the shadow, his voice steady but his heart racing. Maudelin, if that is you, we acknowledge your pain. We seek the truth of your story. What do you want us to know? The air grows colder around them, and for a moment, there is only silence. Then, faintly, the sound comes again, this time a little clearer. Truth, justice, this brief encounter, though terrifying, strengthens their resolve. They need to learn more, to understand what specific acts of truth and justice Maudelin seeks. Is it simply the retelling of her story, or something more concrete, a symbolic gesture of reparation, perhaps? The village, too begins to respond to these events. 
a mixture of fear and fascination stirring within its residents. Some express skepticism, dismissing the encounters as tricks of the mind or the result of the villagers' vivid imaginations. Others start to believe that something unresolved is indeed manifesting through these supernatural occurrences. As Alex and Jonathan prepare to delve deeper, they realize that confronting a purse born of centuries-old injustice requires not just bravery, but a community's willingness to face its past. They plan a village meeting, intending to share their findings and propose a collective effort to acknowledge and perhaps appease the restless spirit of Maudelin. Join us in our next chapter as the villagers confront the darkness of their history together. Will this collective acknowledgement lead to peace, or will it stir deeper shadows? Stay tuned, for in Plukli, Every whisper and shadow might just reveal an ancient truth, desperate to be heard. Welcome back to the Witch's Shadow in Plukli Village, where the past's cold grip tightens around the present. In tonight's chapter, the chilling effects of Maudelin's curse seep deeper into the fabric of the village, touching its longest inhabitants with a sinister chill. As fear mounts, the villagers grapple with a terror that is both ancient and eerily personal. In recent days, a troubling pattern emerges. Children of the village began to exhibit strange behaviors and unexplained illnesses. Little Emma, a warmly vibrant girl of seven, wakes nightly screaming from nightmares that leave her pale and withdrawn by day. Her dreams, she whispers, are filled with shadows, and a woman's sorrowful voice that calls out from the darkness, pleading to be remembered. Similarly, young Tom, known for his ceaseless energy, suddenly becomes listless, his once bright eyes now dull and shadowed. His mother confides to her neighbor, her voice trembling. He just stands at the window staring out at the churchyard, as if he sees something I can't. No doctor can determine the cause of Tom's or Emma's afflictions. Leaving the village to whisper fearfully about the reach of the witch's curse, panic begins to seep into the heart of the community. Parents keep their children indoors after dusk, and the school teacher notes an atmosphere of anxiety among herbals that makes concentration and laughter rare commodities. The local priest, Father Whiteley, tries to offer comfort, holding extra services intended to ward off evil. But the pews are filled more with fear than with faith. Amid this growing dread, Alex and Jonathan push forward with their investigation, driven by a desperate need to find a resolution. Their nights are spent reviewing recordings, their days filled with meetings and research. But the solution to lifting the purse remains elusive. The atmosphere in a village grows heavier, a palpable blanket of dread that clings to the old stone buildings and winds along the narrow lanes. It's during one such evening, under a crescent moon, that Alex encounters Sarah, 
a local teenager, near the screaming woods. She's visibly shaken, her face ghostly pale under the moonlight. I saw her, she whispers, her voice barely audible. The witch, by the old oak. She was crying, Alex. It's not just anger. It's sadness, profound and piercing. This revelation strikes a chord in Alex. Perhaps, he muses, the key to breaking the curse lies not in fear, but in empathy, in understanding the full scope of Maudlin's tragedy, not just her anger and vengeance. The curse, he begins to realize, is fueled by unacknowledged sorrow and an injustice buried in the village's very bones. As the chapter closes, the village stands at a crossroads, enveloped by a fear that tightens like a noose. Let, there emerges a glimmer of hope in Alex's theory that understanding and acknowledgement might be the key to salvation. Will Pluckley's residents come together to confront their haunted past and heal the wounds of history? Stay tuned for our next chapter as we venture deeper into the shadows of Pluckley, searching for a way to untangle the curse from the roots of its sorrowful inception. In this village, every stone and shadow holds a story, and every story yearns for a resolution that can only come from the courage to face the darkest of truths. Welcome back to the mist-shrouded lanes of the Witch's Shadow in Pluckley Village, where the past is not dead, but is merely waiting. Tonight, in Chapter 8, revelations shock the very foundation of our tale, as secrets long buried rise to the surface, revealing connections that bind our protagonist, Alex directly to the haunting at the heart of this village. The evening air is cool and heavy with the scent of autumn decay, as Alex and Jonathan, lanterns in hand, delve into the musty archives stored in the attic of the village hall. Here lies a forgotten collection of diaries, letters, and official records, yellowed with age that might just hold the key to understanding the witch, model in, and her purse. As they sift through the documents, a particular leather-bound diary catches Alex's eye. The diary, belonging to a distant relative of Alex whom he had never known about, details life in Pluckley at the time of Maudelin's persecution. With hands trembling slightly, Alex reads aloud, his voice echoing softly in the attic. The diary entry describes how the author's family, once influential in village affairs, played a pivotal role in the accusations against Maudelin. They have coveted her land, which and fertile lying strategically at the village's edge, a perfect expansion for their already vast estates. As Jonathan listens, his eyes widen with understanding. Alex, do you realize what this means? He asks, his voice grave. Your ancestress' actions may have directly contributed to Maudelin's fate. This could be why you're so drawn to this mystery, why the shadow has revealed itself to you. The weight of the revelation hangs heavy in the air. 
Alex feels a chill that has nothing to do with the night. The past of his own bloodline, intertwined with the village's darkest chapter, adds a profound personal stake to his quest. The curse, it seems, seeks not just recognition, but retribution and reconciliation. Driven by this newfound personal connection, Alex and Jonathan dig deeper into the village's archives. They discover more than just the greed of Alex's ancestors. They unearth a pact made by several village leaders to rid Pluckley of Maudelin, masking their malicious intent with accusations of witchcraft. This dark secret, once exposed to the flickering lantern light, changes everything. The curse was not just a result of fear or misunderstanding, but a calculated move to benefit from Maudlin's demise. As they piece together the puzzle, the implications are clear. The village's collective sin was greater than anyone had dared admit. With these revelations, Alex feels a surge of responsibility not just to clear model in's name, but to right the wrongs of his own lineage. He realizes that the village's current sufferings, the strange phenomena, the haunting, may not cease until these truths are brought to light and acknowledged by all of Pluckley. As the chapter closes, Alex prepares to confront the village with these truths, unsure of their reception. Will they accept this dark past and join him in seeking redemption? Or will they deny the sins of their forebears, continuing to live under the weight of the witch's shadow? Join us next time as Alex steps forward to reveal all seeking to heal the wounds of the past with the salve of truth. In Pluckley, the shadows of history are long, and they cling to the present with stubborn intensity. Only by facing them can a village hope to find peace. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the haunting saga of the Witch's Shadow in Pluckley Village. As the village confronts its dark past, tonight's Chapter 9 finds Alex and his allies in a desperate search for a way to counteract the ancient curse that holds Pluckley in its shadowed grasp. With time running out and the village on edge, they turn to the old ways hoping to find redemption and peace through ancient rituals and forgotten magic. With the revelations of the previous night weighing heavily on his mind, Alex meets with Jonathan and several open-minded villagers to devise a plan. They gather in the dimly lit back room of the local pub, maps and old burks spread out before them. The air is thick with apprehension and the faint smell of wood smoke from the hearth. Jonathan, having spent decades studying the folklore of Pluckley, suggests that they look to the old ways for a solution. In times past, he explains, the people of this land would use rituals to appease angered spirits. Perhaps what Maudelin seeks is not just acknowledgement of her unjust death, but a formal request for forgiveness, a release from the ties that bind her to this world. Intrigued and desperate, Alex and a group 
pore over ancient texts and almanacs, searching for rituals that might suit their needs. They decide on a two-part ritual designed to appease and banish spirits. The first part involves the crafting of an effigy, representing Maudelin, which would serve as a symbolic apology and a vessel for their collective regret. The second part requires a ceremonial burning of the effigy at the Old Oak where Maudelin was condemned accompanied by the villagers reciting an ancient plea for forgiveness. The preparation is meticulous. Alex takes the lead in gathering the necessary materials, twigs from the ground near the old oak, fabric from the local sempstress, and a lock of hair from each participant, symbolizing their personal involvement and desire for reconciliation. As they assemble the effigy, each person shares a story of how the witch's shadow has touched their lives, weaving their hopes and fears into the very fabric of the creation. On the night of the ritual, the villagers, led by Alex, gather around the old oak. The air is thick with a mix of fear and anticipation. Torches cast flickering shadows making the twisted branches of the oak seem to rive in the wind. The effigy is placed at the base of the tree, and as the ceremony begins, Jonathan leads them in reciting the ancient words, their voices rising in a haunting chorus. O spirit bound by pain and loss, hear now our plea. We acknowledge your suffering. We bespeak your release. Forgive us, as we forgive the past. Free yourself, as we free our hearts. Go now, find peace beyond these shadows dark. With each verse, the villagers place a small offering at the base of the tree flowers, small tokens, personal letters of apology and hope. Finally, as the last words are spoken, Alex sets the effigy alight. The flames quickly consume it, sending a column of smoke into the night sky, carrying their collective apology to the realms beyond. As the fire dies down, a profound silence envelops the group. The oppressive heaviness that had lingered over Plukli seems to lift slightly a subtle shaft that leaves them all holding their breath, wondering if their efforts have been enough. In tonight's chapter, Plukli has taken a crucial step towards unraveling the curse, guided by the hope that old magic and sincere hearts can heal even the deepest of wounds. Join us next time to discover if the witch's shadow recedes or if more darkness awaits. For in Plukli, every shadow and light tells a story, and every story seeks its ending. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the airy embrace of the Witch's Shadow in Plukli Village, where the past's darkness lingers like a silent fog. In tonight's pivotal Chapter 10, Alex and the villagers of Plukli confront the supernatural directly, embarking on a daring ritual they hope will banish the Witch's Shadow forever. But as they will soon learn, the shadows of history are not easily dispelled. The night chosen for the ritual is one of a new moon, 
where darkness envelops the village like a cloak. This darkness, they believe, will help conceal them from any malevolent forces that may attempt to disrupt their efforts. The air is charged with a tense energy as the villagers gather once again at the old oak, the site of so many sorrows and secrets. Lanterns flicker in a cool night breeze, casting eerie, dancing shadows on the faces of those assembled. Alex, now seen as the leader of this endeavor, begins the preparation by drawing a circle around the congregation with salt, a symbol of protection and purity meant to keep evil spirits at bay. Inside this circle, they place symbols of the village, earth from the churchyard, water from the brook that runs through the village, and personal tokens from those gathered, each adding their hopes to the collective will. As the ritual starts, Jonathan recites ancient incantations, his voice steady despite the palpable tension. The villagers join in, their voices a unified chant that rises into the night. Alex holds a loft a talisman, an old relic said to have belonged to Madeleine, discovered in the archives. It is their hope that this connection to her will help focus their intentions, bridging past and present. Suddenly, the wind picks up, howling through the trees with a fury that seems almost sentient. The lanterns flicker wildly, some sniffing out, plunging them into near total darkness. A palpable sense of dread fills the air and several villagers gasp as the temperature drops, their breath now visible in the chilling air. From the darkness at the edge of their circle, a figure emerges the shadow of Madeleine, more defined than ever before, its edges sharp and menacing. The shadow seems to pulsate, growing larger as a feeding off their fear. Alex steps forward, holding out the talisman, his voice rising over the wind as he continues the incantation. By the bond that ties you to this land, we call for your release. By the justice long denied to you, we offer reparation. Your pain is acknowledged, your story known. Be unbound, be free. Depart from this place and find peace. The shadow pauses, its form wavering as if struck. A silence descends, the wind dying down as quickly as it had arisen. The shadow flickers, then slowly begins to dissolve, the darkness seeming to thin, breaking apart like mist under the morning sun. As the last vestiges of the shadow fade, a lightness fills the air, a sensation of release that many in the circle feel as a physical unburdening. Tears mix with relieved smiles as the villagers embrace, feeling for the first time in generations the possibility of a life free from the witch's curse. Tonight, Pluckley has faced its darkest hour with courage and unity. But has the shadow truly been banished? Or does the curse of Maudelin run deeper than they know? Join us next time as we explore the aftermath of the ritual and the new dawn it heralds for Pluckley. For in the shadows of this village, nothing is ever truly as it seems and each light past must contend with the darkness it seeks to dispel. Stay tuned.
Welcome back to the enigmatic shadows of the Witch's Shadow in Pluckley Village. In tonight's Chapter 11, we tread softly into the quiet aftermath of the ritual, seeking signs of peace or portents of lingering spirits. The village of Pluckley, having united in a bid to sever the ties of a century's old purse, now waits with bated breath to see if the darkness has truly been dispelled. As dawn breaks over Pluckley the morning after the ritual, a tentative calm seems to have settled across the village. The sun rises, casting golden light on the old oak, which for the first time in many does not seem to loom ominously over the village. Villagers cautiously step out of their homes, their eyes searching the familiar lanes and shadows for signs, wondering if the oppressive weight of Model Inn's curse has been lifted. Alex, wary but hopeful, walks through the village, his steps echoing in a quiet morning. He notices small changes, a bird singing near the churchyard, the laughter of children as they play near the brook. Sounds that had become rare in recent times. People greet him with cautious smiles, sharing stories of a night undisturbed by nightmares or cold whispers. However, not all is serene in Pluckley. At the edge of the village, near the screaming woods, a few villagers report a lingering chill and a feeling of being watched. An elderly woman, Mrs. Darrow claims to have seen a fleeting shadow at dawn, moving silently towards the woods. It's less menacing, more lost, she describes, her voice trembling not with fear, but with an unexpected pity. Jonathan, continuing his role as the village historian and now part-time sleuth of the supernatural, meets with Alex to discuss these mixed reports. It's possible part of the spirit remains unresolved, or perhaps these are just echoes of the past. Reluctant to fade, he theorizes. They agree that more time and observation are needed to truly understand the effects of the ritual. The village council, inspired by the recent events, votes to establish an annual day of remembrance for Model N and all those misunderstood and wronged in the village's history. It is seen not only as a gesture of reconciliation, but also as a safeguard, a collective commitment to remembering the past fully and fairly, to prevent the seeds of such darkness from taking root again. As weeks pass, the immediate fear that had gripped Pluckley begins to dissipate. Children venture out longer after dusk. Parents watch less anxiously. And the nightly gatherings in the pub are filled more with laughter than with hushed, fearful discussions. Let some, like Alex and Jonathan, keep a watchful eye on the mood of the village and the whispers of the woods. In tonight's chapter, Pluckley finds itself at a crossroads between a haunted past and a hopeful future. The ritual appears to have brought some measure of peace. That the true success of such a venture may not be measured in days or weeks, but in generations. Join us next time as we continue to explore the legacy of the witch's shadow. Will the village finally free itself from the grep of ancient purses? Or will new mysteries emerge from the old? In Pluckley, every shadow holds a story, and every light pasts a new shadow. Stay tuned.
Welcome back to the final chapter of The Witch's Shadow in Pluckley Village. As we draw the curtains on this haunting tale, we reflect on the events that have reshaped the village and the lives within it, pondering the delicate balance between light and darkness, truth and legend. In the wake of the ritual, Pluckley emerges altered, not just in the eyes of its residents, but in the whispers of its past. The village, once shrouded in an almost palpable dread, now breathes a little easier. The children's laughter rings troar, free from the shadow of an ancient curse. Debt? The change is not merely atmospheric, but deeply personal for many including our protagonist, Alex. Alex finds himself at a crossroads, having uncovered not only the secrets of Pluckley, but also the dark chapters of his own family's history. His journey into the village's haunted past has become a journey into his own identity, challenging him to reconcile the sins of his ancestors with his own quest for truth. This quest, which began as a curious exploration, has evolved into a personal mission to ensure that the mistakes of the past are neither forgotten nor repeated. In reflecting on the events, Alex decides to make Pluckley his home, committed to preserving its history both its darkest and its most enlightening moments. He works alongside Jonathan to establish a small museum dedicated to the village's history, including the true story of Madeleine. This endeavor, they hope, will educate future generations and perhaps keep the more malevolent spirits at bay by acknowledging their stories and learning from them. Net, the shadow of Madeleine, though diminished, is not entirely gone. As the village prepares for its first annual day of remembrance, a subtle air of expectancy hangs over the preparations. Late at night, when the mist rolls in from the fields and shrouds the lanes in its ghostly embrace, some claim to feel a presence a sadness lingering in the air. These moments, fleeting and ephemeral, serve as reminders that the past, while acknowledged, may never be fully appeased. The villagers, once fearful, now approach these occurrences with a new resolve, seeing them not as threats but as reminders of their history. They understand that some shadows may never fully recede, that they are part of the landscape, woven into the fabric of the village itself. As we conclude your tale, Alex stands by the old oak, the site of so much sorrow and now of reconciliation. He looks up at the sprawling branches, now not with fear, but with a respectful acknowledgement. We remember, he whispers into the twilight, a pledge from those who live in the light to those who dwell in the shadows. And so, dear listeners, we leave Pluckley Village, a place forever touched by the witch's shadow, but enlightened by the truth brought to light by those brave enough to seek it. Remember, in every shadow there is a story, in every light, a lesson. Until our next tale, may you walk in light and remember the shadows. As our journey through the haunted heart of Plickley Village comes to a close, we thank you, dear listeners, for accompanying us down these shadowed paths where the echoes of the past speak to us still. 
This tale of the witch's shadow in Plickley Village reminds us that the veils between yesterday and today, between the known and the unknown, are thinner than we might imagine. Through the mists of fear and the whispers of old curses, we've seen a community not only confront its darkest legacies, but learn to live with them, transforming fear into understanding and spectral hauntings into lessons of history. The shadows of Model Inn, though less menacing now, continue to drift along the edges of Pluckley, a spectral reminder of the past's endearing presence. Alex, once a newcomer driven by curiosity, now stands as a guardian of Pluckley's history, a bridge between the village's spectral past and its living present. His story is a testament to the power of facing our fears, of digging deep into the soil of history to unearth the roots of long-standing mysteries. As we part ways with Plukli, we leave behind the old oak, the whispering woods, and the village lanes that twist like the stories they harbor. But remember, the end of one tale is merely the whisper of another beginning, waiting in the shadows, ready to be told. Thank you for tuning into The Witch's Shadow in Plokley Village. May your days be bright, your nights peaceful, and your heart always open to the stories hidden in the shadows. Until next time, take care and keep listening.